The purpose of this video is to present an evidence-based medicine approach to the insertion and maintenance of central venous catheters for vascular access or hemodynamic monitoring. Central venous catheter insertion is an essential procedure in the treatment of many hospitalized patients. These catheters provide secure access to the central circulation for a variety of indications, including emergency resuscitation or rapid infusion of fluids, delivery of essential fluids and medications, continuous monitoring of central venous pressure, administration of potent vasoactive medications, total parenteral nutrition, transvenous pacing, pulmonary artery catheterization, hemodialysis or hemofiltration, or lack of peripheral venous access. As they are associated with higher rates of clapsy than peripheral intravenous catheters, they should be removed whenever the patient no longer meets one of these indications. While the use of central venous catheters is commonplace in the intensive care unit, it is important to remember that they can be associated with serious complications that may result in significant patient morbidity and mortality. The prevention of central line associated bloodstream infection, or CLAPSI, is essential to improving patient outcomes and reducing healthcare costs. It is estimated that over 250,000 cases of CLAPSI occur annually in the United States, with an added healthcare cost of $25,000 to $56,000 for each such infection. The risks of central venous catheter related complications may generally be divided into three types infectious, mechanical, and thrombotic. These complications can lead to significant patient morbidity and mortality, including infection, pneumothorax, hemothorax, hematoma, thrombosis, arrhythmia, and arterial puncture. Proper insertion technique and compliance with catheter insertion and maintenance protocols have been shown to significantly reduce the incidence of such complications. Hi, Jane Smith. Dr. Short, how are you doing today? I'm here to talk to you today about placing a central line. Prior to inserting a central venous catheter, the patient and family should be informed of the potential risks and benefits of central venous catheterization. Informed consent should be obtained, and any questions the patient may have should be answered. To begin a central venous catheter insertion, the following supplies should be available at the patient's bedside. A mask, cap, eye protection, sterile gown, sterile gloves, a large sterile full body drape, a central venous catheter insertion kit, 2% chlorhexidine gluconate skin prep, and sterile saline flush syringes. When necessary, the choice of central venous catheter should be based upon the current needs of the patient. The greater the number of lumens, the more frequently the catheter will be accessed and manipulated, increasing the risk of catheter-related infection. As a general rule, choose the catheter with the fewest lumens necessary. Antibiotic impregnated central venous catheters are now commonplace and have been demonstrated to decrease the rate of clapsy and hospital costs. All invasive procedures should be performed in a sterile manner with strict attention to aseptic technique. This begins with good hand hygiene. The proceduralist performing the procedure should thoroughly wash their hands prior to beginning the procedure. The patient is Mary Jones. Her birth date is June 6th. A timeout should be performed confirming the correct patient, site, procedure, and equipment is available, including confirmation the patient is not allergic to either chlorhexidine gluconate or lidocaine. The patient's nurse should be notified and present throughout the procedure. The patient should be examined, paying close attention to any anatomic difficulties that may increase the risk or difficulty of central venous catheterization. The patient should be placed on a bedside EKG monitor or pulse oximeter, or the proceduralist or nurse should communicate with the patient throughout the procedure to ensure systemic perfusion and absence of cardiac arrhythmias. The patient should be placed in the Trendelenburg, or head down position, to reduce the risk of air embolism during central venous catheter insertion. For subclavian insertion, a towel roll between the patient's shoulder blades may facilitate access to the subclavian vein. For internal jugular insertion, the patient's head and neck should be turned slightly away from the proposed insertion site. For femoral insertion, the patient's legs should be slightly abducted. To begin, the proceduralist should don sterile gloves, mask, and eye protection. This is essential to reducing the risk of catheter-associated bloodstream infection. Unless the patient is allergic, 
Chlorhexidine gluconate is the preferred skin antiseptic. If the patient is allergic to this product, povidone iodine may be used. The proposed insertion site should be widely prepped and the antiseptic allowed to dry before proceeding with catheter insertion. The proceduralist should now don a sterile gown and new sterile gloves. Widely drape the entire patient, applying the drape so that the hole in the plastic portion of the drape overlies the intended insertion site. Infiltrate the skin of the proposed insertion site with local anesthetic. For the subclavian vein, confirm the position of the sternal notch and the middle third of the clavicle. Insert the needle one centimeter below and one centimeter lateral to the middle third of the clavicle. The needle tip should be aimed at the sternal notch. The barrel of the syringe should always be maintained parallel to the floor to avoid injuring the lung. Pulling the patient's ipsilateral arm down may facilitate localizing the vein. Advance the needle with continuous suction applied to the syringe until blood flows freely into the syringe. The vein is usually accessed after advancing the needle three to five centimeters, depending upon the patient's size and anatomy. For the internal jugular vein, identify the triangle formed by the sternal and clavicular heads of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the clavicle. Determine the location of the carotid pulse. The path of the internal jugular vein runs just lateral to the carotid artery. The needle should enter the skin at the apex of the triangle, just lateral to the carotid pulse, aiming for the ipsilateral nipple with the barrel of the syringe maintained at a 45 degree angle. The vein is usually accessed at a depth of one to two centimeters. Bedside ultrasound has been demonstrated to reduce the risk of arterial injury and should be utilized if available. The internal jugular vein is identified as a compressible structure whose diameter changes with respiration. For the femoral vein, the femoral arterial pulse should be identified just below the inguinal ligament and midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. Insert the needle medial to the palpable femoral pulse with the barrel of the syringe angled cephalad and maintained at a 45 degree angle to the skin. The vein is usually accessed at a depth of two to four centimeters. Once the vein has been localized, insert the guide wire through the needle and into the vein. Stop if resistance is felt. The guide wire should thread easily. If not, gently remove the wire, reattach a syringe, and confirm free aspiration of blood before reattempting guide wire passage. Do not pull the guide wire back through the needle if resistance is felt, as this may shear the guide wire tip, embolizing it into the central circulation. Observe the patient's monitor closely for arrhythmias or communicate with the patient to ensure that they remain conscious. If arrhythmias occur, withdraw the guide wire until they cease. Create a stab wound in the skin at the guide wire insertion site using a scalpel. Gently pass the dilator over the wire and into the skin. Do not hub the dilator as this can cause damage to the underlying venous structures. Remove the dilator. Pass the central venous catheter over the guide wire, maintaining control of the wire at all times. Insert the catheter to an appropriate position based upon the patient's size. Remove the wire and aspirate blood from all ports to confirm appropriate positioning. Flush each port with sterile saline. Suture the catheter to the skin after infiltration with local anesthetic. Apply a chlorhexidine impregnated patch, or bio patch, around the catheter with the blue side facing up. Clean the insertion site and apply a sterile occlusive dressing. All sharps should be properly disposed of in an appropriate container. This is the performing clinician's responsibility. For subclavian and internal jugular insertions, obtain a chest radiograph to document proper catheter tip placement and to ensure that there is no pneumothorax or hemothorax. The tip of the catheter should be in the distal superior vena cava at the junction of the right atrium. Document the central venous catheter insertion in the medical record, including the time and date of insertion. 